Hi everyone and welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how we can create doors and assign locks to these doors. First, let's check out this demo project that I have in front of me. This is what we're going to be completing. So right now I'm a prisoner in this room and for some reason I'm going to need access to the cell. But you can see when I'm walking over the door I can't open it and that's because the door is locked. Well luckily enough a guard left a key over here on the chair so I can go over and pick it up. Now I'm going to go over to the door. I should be able to walk through it. And now I have access to this room. Now there's going to be some things I'm not going to be covering in this tutorial, but if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll be able to download the full source code from the Patreon site. Now the thing I am going to be covering is the door, how we locked it, how we opened it and picked up the key. At the same time, we can also code it as just a normal door so we can just go over and kind of walk through it. I'm not going to be doing any animations in here, so I'll just leave that up to you. So let me close this and let's switch over to a project that isn't working and let's actually build it. I've loaded up the project here and this is what we're going to be working with. You can see the rooms already set up with some items as well as collisions and the instances that we use. What I want to do is focus on the player. If we open up the player, you'll see that we have the create event, step, we have an alarm, draw, and draw a GUI. We're not going to go through all of the code here but we'll go through some certain parts. Right here we have a debug option and I'm actually going to turn this on because we'll get to this in just one second here. Obviously we have our key movement, our speed, we also have some sound effects in here, and then we have a small state machine. Now in here we also have a key count, but if I scroll down underneath we have some interaction variables. So I have an offset for X and Y and the radius. Now the reason why I turned the debug on is because I want to use these three variables to figure out what my player can interact with. If I quickly take a look at the player's sprite, you'll see that the anchor point is set to the bottom, however the collision mask is set just basically to the legs. So the reason I'm going to be using these variables here is to draw a bigger collision mass to figure out what we're actually colliding with. So using these variables, what I want to do is I want to draw a circle from the player. And luckily enough, if I go to the draw event, you can see that if debug is set to true, then we're already going to draw a circle out. We're going to draw from the X and Y coordinates, just adding the offsets and then our radius. So if I hit F5 to test this, we should see that we have a green circle, which is going to be our interactive, or sorry, our interaction radius. So anything that comes within the circle, we can interact with. Obviously right now, just like before, I cannot open any of these doors because they're not coded. Now, what I want to do is first, we're going to have to set up some code so we can do that interaction. So actually down in the step event here, all the way down at the bottom, we have some code for interacting. So what I want to do is use the collision circle function. So we'll say var instance equals collision underscore circle. And we may run into a few problems with this where if we have more than one instance that we're able to interact with, we, not, we might not find both instances. So for in that case, we can grab a list and sort them. And I believe we did that in the platformer tutorial when we were setting up the enemy that falls from the top of the ceiling to the bottom. So check that out if you wanted to use that. But just using the basics, we wanna draw a circle from the X and then using the offsets the X and Y position. And then we need to have the radius, so how big our circle's gonna be, and what object are we looking for. So I'm just gonna fill in object for now. And uh, we're not gonna use precise, and we don't need to include the calling object, with our, which is our player. Now the reason why I just threw an object here is because we don't want to have to check for a key and then we don't want to have to check for, let's say a red key, a blue key, a yellow key. We want to write this kind of once and then have it work. So what we can do is we can set up these objects to be a child of a certain parent. For example, if we go to objects and we create a new object, let's just call it obj underscore interactive or we'll say interactable and in here i want to add an event and just throw in a create event for now so now when we add a new object we'll say obj key we'll have the spray as the key and what i want to do is set the parent 
to be the interactive parent. So this object, which is just right up here, this is the one we're going to check for, and then we're going to have to figure out what the actual object is. Is it, you know, the red key, the yellow key, or the blue key? And the easiest way that we can do this is by using an enumerator. So actually in here, we have our scripts for enum, and let's just go and add a new enumerator in here. And if you're not familiar with enumerators, we're basically just taking the values that we have in here, and they're gonna become numbers. So zero, one, two, three, four, four, five. And then uh, instead of remembering these numbers, we can just refer to them by name. So let's set up our default, which is nothing. Let's say we have a key. We can have a door, locked door, and let's pretend we have a cup. And so we also need to give this a name, item types. Now, we don't need to call this script in anywhere. These enumerators are going to be put into our game automatically, so we don't have to do anything with this. So knowing that we now have this enumerator called item types, in the parent object in the create event, I want to say type equals item types dot nothing. And that's just going to be the default type for any interactable object. Now the reason we're doing this is because if we take a look at the key, you can see that right here, the create event, it says item types is nothing. So what we wanna do is right click and override this event, and then we'll set the item types to be equal to a key. And now when our player walks over the interactable object, we can just check the type and see what we need to do. So if we go back to our player, and right here where we have the collision circle, we'll go all the way over and instead of looking for just the object, we want to look for this parent object, which is obj underscore interactable. Now we can write a short if statement to say if instance not equal no one. So meaning that we have an actual instance. Well, here's where we're going to have to figure out what we want to do and what type it is. So we could do a switch on the instance type and depending on what the type is, so we say case item types dot key. So if it's a key, what do we want to do? Well, if it's a key, let's increase our key count by one. So we'll say key count plus equals one. And then we need to destroy this instance. So we can say instance destroy and just pass in the variable. And then we'll get rid of the colliding instance. So what we have to do is go back to our room and inside the instances, let's grab our key and let's place it here. And I'm gonna double click and scale it down. That looks about right. And let's see if we can pick that up. So let's hit F5. We'll have our game run and we should pick up a key here and the key should disappear. Let's see. And there you go. So it's interacted with the key. We now have one key and the key disappeared. We still can't open our door, and that's just because we haven't coded this. So all we really need to do to get our door working now is inside the door code, we'll make sure that we set the parent to the interactable object. And with the create event, all we have to do is say, well, let's actually overwrite this event. And instead of the type being nothing, now let's do the door first. So the type is going to be door. So in the object player, we'll make a new case. So let's say we interact with a door. Well, we don't really do any instance, sorry, any key count or anything. We'll just destroy the instance. So this means that if I walk up to the door, hopefully that door will disappear and it should be able to get by. Perfect. So that's working. Now let's hook up that key to the locked door. So in here, Instead of having a door, we have a lock door. And in the player itself, we'll make a new case for this. So we'll say locked door. And this one's going to be pretty simple. All we have to do is say if our key underscore count is bigger than zero, meaning we do have a key, then we want to say key underscore count minus equals one and then destroy the door so we can get in. Now, if everything's set up properly, I'm just gonna double check that lock. We should be able to hit a five here, and I should be able to walk over to the door, and I can't get in, so let's go collect this key. 
And now let's go back and try and open the store. This up here, our key should go to zero. And it does, and we are now in the room. Now the only other thing that we may want to do here is when we pick up something like the key, we could say this play audio. So let's do this. We'll say once we pick up the key, I want to use the SRC play audio script that I have. And I want to play the pickup. And I'm passing in a second option here as this little script, as the second option will give it a random pitch and I don't really want a random pitch for the key. And let's see, when we open a door, I want to play the uh, open sound and as well open the sound there. Now our game should have some lovely sound. So we'll walk out over, pick up the key. Nice, and then we can come back and we can also open the store and we have sound there. So that is really it. All you really have to do is continue adding different interactable objects and hooking them up with this switch statement here in the player. So perhaps you wanted the player to, you know, pick up a cup or something. All you would have to do is put the case statement in for the cup and what you actually want it to have happen. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you're able to take this knowledge and transfer it into your own video games. A special thanks to Matt and Paul and any anonymous supporters we have on Patreon. Any little bit helps, and I'd just like to say thank you once again.